Then we have the intrusion prevention system, which what an IPS is, it's likewise it's going to be a system which is going to be deployed in line. It was going to be sitting. It's going to sit in line of the traffic uh, path. It's going to perform deep end inspection, uh, likewise. So it's like uh, another. Uh, it's not a firewall, but it's another deep uh, deep end inspection uh, solution. It's going to inspect the network in traffic in real time. It can likewise be software or hardware, and in general, responds also automatically to detected attacks. So the IPS has the same role as the old IDS, which stands for Intrusion Detection System. The main difference between IDS and IPS is that the IDS was not in the traffic path. So the IDS was receiving a, a copy of the traffic uh, for inspection while IPS st stays in line. So in general, IPS is going to be invisible, stealth to the attacker, not discoverable, because you know it's going to be deployed in line as a layer two device. And it's going to be able to, in most cases, complement traditional firewall functionality, which lacks uh, application visibility, and the IPS has that visibility. Now the IPS is going to inspect all traffic, and it's going to be able to detect any kind of let's say attacks in two ways. So Ada is going to be able to detect what is called malicious traffic based on it, based on a signature, uh, based, uh, based on, a, on its engine, a signature based engine. So the IPS is going to be pre-configured with, with a set of rules and a set of traffic patterns. And if it sees those patterns, that means that that's an attack, which is going to, uh, which is going to exploit a specific vulner vulnerability. And then it's going to take the action of the signature which again, we're going to speak more details tomorrow, the action can be, can vary um, in nature, based on the, based on the uh, let's say, signature. Each signature may have different available actions that IPS can take whenever traffic is identified against the signature, which means a specific attack is, is going on. Otherwise, also the IPS can also uh, detect attacks uh, in uh, like suspicious traffic, which is called the anomaly-based functionality. So looking at the diagram in here, first of all, as I was saying, if you look between router 1 and router, for example, between router 3 and ASA 3, it's a layered filling. So always the IPS is going to be deployed in line like a layer 2 device. So it's like a switch, we want to call it that way. It says an IP address only for management purposes, but our otherwise is going to be connected in the network and its interfaces, which are connected to the network, where traffic is being received back and forth lively. Those are going to be layer two interfaces. So it has the IPS has a specific layer two interface only for management purposes. Let me uh, delete this in here because it was not clear enough. So I'm going to put it in here. So I was saying IPS, or to be even better uh, simplified, let's do it like this. This is my IPS box, which I'm going to put it in line, let's say, with two interfaces on this segment. And both of those interfaces are going to be layer two links, no IP addresses. So it means that all traffic flowing in VLAN 37 is going to flow back and forth to the IPS. So that means that all traffic flowing from the internet or to the internet is going to go like this. Router 4, ASA 3, then it's going to go to the IPS, it's going to be inspected. And if the IPS detects an attack, it's going to take the action that it's configured for. Otherwise, if there's no attack, it's going to send the, the traffic back in the network towards its destination. So the traffic is clean, the IPS sends back the traffic in the network without doing any changes at the IP level. But if an attack is being detected, then uh, either based on the signature engine of the IPS or based on the anomaly detection feature of the IPS, if there's an attack being detected, then IPS is going to take the action that is going to be configured for, which in most cases is going to be configured to you know, block the attacker, uh, drop the packets. We're going to speak in a couple in more details uh, tomorrow. There we go. So it's going to be always deployed in line, while the IDS was always deployed uh, out of band. So this is in band, 
the IDS was deployed out of band, meaning the IDS was receiving a copy of the traffic. Like for example, if I'm going to deploy an IDS in the network, it means that traffic flowing likewise from the internet towards the toward it, to between the internet and the LAN, it is going to flow like this, for example, between a host and the internet, so host 1 and PC A is going to flow to router 4, SA3, router 3, router 2 and this PC A. So the IDS is not in line of the traffic path is out of band. And I'm going to configure one of the network devices to send a copy of the traffic via span. So I'm going to send a copy of the traffic via span. So the IPS receives traffic copy, the IDS receives a traffic copy via span or remote span. So that's the main difference between IDS and IPS. You would consider that uh, you would consider that basically the IDS can just detect attacks and the IPS can prevent attacks because that's the name in convention. However, that's not the case. We're going to speak in, uh, in more details um, uh, tomorrow a bit about all of these uh, options. But otherwise, uh, this is the functionality of the IPS. So you put it in line, all traffic flows through the IPS. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take the traffic and match it against its signatures or against its anomaly-based uh, rules. And then if an attack is, is detected, it's going to take action as configured.